welcoming the Honorable Governor of the Great State of West Virginia, Governor Jim Jones. sitting here on this stool 
And Phyllis was sitting there, can't in total disbelief that this stool's holding me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but nevertheless, you've got a guy that is best buds with the President of the United States of America. And I will promise you that West Virginia will get its fair share. Now, we all know right now the President is really unhappy with one of our Senators. And that's not good. That's not good. But I can tell you that on Friday I talked to Don Jr. and on Friday afternoon late the President called me from Air Force One. At that point in time he was more focused on our Senator than anything and the man was not a happy man. And so with all that being said, we do have a very, very bright alignment of the stars that can give us a real shot, a real, real, real shot in West Virginia to propel ourselves in the future in a really big way. Now let me address something that I know that you're concerned about, and I want to ask you in just a minute, because I want to see, I want you to raise your hands. But you know this business and inventory and manufacturing or machinery tax is floating around in lots of different ways, is it not? What if I were to say to you, as it's floating around now, would you be for that or against that? And I would like, I would like just this. I would like you to raise your hand if you're for it. You, now, sir, pr protect yourself in every way. These people have knives right now. Let me tell you, I think 100% of us would vote yes if we knew one thing, that the counties would be protected and made whole in every way, shape, form, or fashion, always. The counties would have the ability to grow as we grew. And by that I mean if we had 19 manufacturing plants come into your county, you would have the ability to grow. Not only just be maintained, but the ability to grow. And the other thing is all the school aspects of it would be protected and be able to do the same thing. Let me tell you just this. That is exactly where I stand. That's exactly where I stand. With the additional caveat of just this, that we don't blow up our budget and we blow up our economy and have to make all kinds of drastic cuts in a lot of different other areas because we've done something that is really harpooning us. That's exactly where I stand. You're not going to have to be concerned because I'm telling you just with all my soul, if I tell you it's a seven today, I pride myself to God above and tell you the truth. Now I'll make mistakes. But I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth is just this simple. If we can get rid of that tax and the state can afford it and the counties can, can embrace it and the school system embraces it, we ought to get rid of it. And did you hear what I just said? I hope to God above you heard what I just said. I said, if we can get rid of the tax and the state can afford it and you embrace it, you like it, meaning that your counties are protected. You like it, and the school systems like it. We can do that. It will incentivize more people to come. But if we can't do that, if we can't do that, I can't be on board. That's just it. It's just that simple. If we blow our state up economically, or we hurt our counties or we hurt our school systems, I can't be in favor. So, I want it gone. 
I want us to get rid of tax. I do. I do. I want us to get rid of it if we can. At some point in time, we may have to take a glide slope that takes years and years and years and years and years to get us safe. But we can screw ourselves up and hurt ourselves. We cannot do that. We just can't do it. So all that being said, if you've got a question or something like that you'd like to ask, or if you're tired of listening to me, that's okay too. I'll go tend to my vehicle. But, but, but I really mean this when I say to you that uh, I'm with you all the time because I'm down in the trenches because I think you know what is best for us to do. Now, I'm not just blowing smoke at you. I don't have time to do that in my life to anybody. And I don't do that. But I'm telling you, you can't possibly tell me that you don't know what the people of your county and your county needs more than the Charleston people believe that we know. There's no way. So, if I've got a problem in the world, if I've got a problem, I go to you. You see, that's what I do all the time. Go to any of my businesses, any of my businesses throughout my life, and see what I've done. In all honesty, when I was at the Greenbrier years and years ago and running the Greenbrier and all that stuff, oftentimes I was standing at the front of the Greenbrier talking to the bellmen and asking them what was wrong, what was right, what to do. And the guy's name is Dale Mann. Literally, I have said this before, if I had a spot to have put my children when I was growing up, and I said this 15 years ago, He's an African-American guy. You know, 15 years ago, I said, they said, if you could put your children, maybe 25 years ago, if you could have put your children with somebody to talk them the world, who would you pick? I said, Dale Mann. Dale Mann. Honest and true, 25 or 30 maybe years ago, Dale Mann. And you know why? Because he was always stuck on on with his enthusiasm. He could absolutely make a living on a rock. He knew how to talk to people. And he knew how to engage and go forward. Dale Mann. Imagine that. Dale Mann is you. You are the engines that really make it go. So I'm going to constantly keep driving. I may blow up another vehicle in two points is over. But I'm going to constantly keep driving and I'm going to constantly keep listening. Now, if you've got any questions, uh, uh, As more people to come, 
more manufacturing to start because we will really have the jump start to be able to do that. If there's a way to do that and make all of y'all whole and give you the chance to grow a little because if the plant comes, you want to grow a little, but you will grow a lot from all the employment and all the stuff that will be happening in your counties. And we've got to protect you, the schools, and all the stuff. It is a great, big, big challenge. But here's the thing we cannot do. We cannot do this. And if we do this, it is a monstrosity of a mistake. We can't build a field and hope they'll come. We just can't do that. We got too much going for us right now. If what we do tomorrow is just say, we're going to depend, we're going to do away with it. We may even do away with the automobile tax in order to be able to get it passed. Let's just say we did that. Now we've got a four or five hundred million dollar hole in the bucket. It's, it's so much that you can't fathom from the state side, let alone what it does to y'all. But from the state side, it's four or five hundred million dollars. How are you going to make it up? Well, we're going to say, well, here's what's going to happen. Natural growth. I want to tell you this. If you depend on those two words, you're making a big mistake in life. Natural growth is sitting on this stool right now. And I say that in a funny way. Because that's what I've done. Natural growth. Now, but I am telling you, if you just bet on that, you might as well go out here to level spot off or go somewhere to build a level spot off you got lots of level spots. Have they come? Have they come in groves to instantly, instantly make up five or six, five, four or five hundred million dollars? It's really, really scary. We've got to be sure when we go to step that our feet are on solid, solid ground. We've got to be sure you're protected. That's just how I feel. And they may hack somebody off here and there or whatever like that, but you elected me to be your governor and be really smart about what I do. I'm going to tell you every single thing I told you I would do across, the, across over and over and over and over and over, whether it be the elderly or the vets or the teachers or, or education or, or tourism or whatever. I've done it, and I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm going to be your governor first and foremost. I'm not going to take a chance that's just going to possibly blow us up. We've got to be on solid ground. We have too much right now. The stars are every single one lined up. Lined up, boom, 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 boom. And I hate like crazy that our senator, and if we elect Trump back and we don't, we might as well just make ourselves a state park. I mean, that's all there's to it. I, whether you love him or you hate him, I don't care. But I am telling you, honest to goodness, if we elect Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warner or somebody like that, we might as well just become a state party. That's all there is to it. Now, and so, with that being said, I hate our senator and our president hacking up because that ain't going to help us. It's not going to help us. Your conduit with the president is me. And now it's me and me and me. And so let's do everything we possibly can to persuade our legislatures in any way and every way we can that whatever we do protects you and does right for our state in every way. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you from the bottom of my heart. I feel like our legislatures want just that too. I really do. They want to help. They want to help. But we've got to be really smart on how we help. Listen, I've talked enough. You guys enjoy your lunch. And uh, I mean this when I say you're the engines. God bless you in every way. Thank you all for having me.